Good day, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I must apologize for not posting yesterday as my internet was doing all kinds of things. So, you know, today we work with the provision of the Lord and we work with the leading of the Holy Spirit. Welcome to Lesson 11, How to Repent. Our scripture reading is taken from St. Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Here is a reading of God's holy word. We honor best and thanks be to God. Before we get into how to repent, we need to first know what the word repent means. What is repentance? You know, how did we come about this term? The good old Wikipedia describes repentance as reviewing one's actions and feeling contrition or regret for past wrongs, which is accompanied by a con- commitment to and actual actions that show and prove change for the better. Repentance is important for several reasons. First John 1 verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Here we can see where repentance brings forth purification. Luke 13 verse 2 and 3 says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Suppose ye these Galileans Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans, because they suffered such things? I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Here we see that repentance spares us from the great destruction that will come upon all mankind who have not applied the blood of jesus christ for the atonement of their sins in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth inevitably man was made and we were given a portion of land called the garden of eden to have almost as our little kingdom as our space and you know to have dominion and to represent God there. God gave some instructions to keep dominion over the place. Man yielded that dominion through Adam and Eve's disobedience by eating the forbidden fruit. You know, they were inevitably sent out of the garden. We know how the creation story goes. Now, fast forward to 2024, So many people are killing each other. So many people are feeling as though even if they're not hurting others, they're not really lying that much, that they are good people and good people enough to get into heaven. No, that's not how it works. Without a relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, without accepting him as as head of our lives, without accepting, you know, his gift of salvation, we will receive the punishment and atonement for our um the punishment for our sins rather and scripture tells us that the wages of sin is death right and death doesn't only mean like physically dying but it means separation from god no i don't know about you but i would rather to keep close to my lord and savior than to be separated from God because especially over the last couple weeks I've been really enjoying not just posting out these teaching lessons but really enjoying the presence of the Lord and just basking in the fullness of his joy and this is something beautiful we've got a beautiful relationship going on here and I don't want to lose that so I recognize that repentance is important. Every day we got to get up and die to the flesh. Every day we got to get up and recognize, hey, there are ways in which that we sin, that we know we sin knowingly and unknowingly, right? And in order to escape the destruction, we need to apply the blood of Jesus Christ. And in order to do so, we must, you know, acknowledge first and foremost that we have sinned. And that we fall in short of the glory of God and that we need the blood of Jesus Christ to wash us and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. And to wash away the indignation that's kindled against those who are not of the fold. Hence why Acts 3 verse 19 would tell us that repentance would cause for our sins to be blotted out. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 25 says, In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the 
acknowledging of the truth. I see here that repentance leads to acknowledging of the truth. And we all know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So repentance leads to you acknowledging the truth, which is Jesus Christ, which is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. From this statement, we can also deduce that repentance brings us closer to our heavenly father. Now that we've acknowledged some truths as it relates to the importance of and the benefits of repentance let us get into how to repent the kind chronicle chapter 7 verse 14 says if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land Repentance first starts with humbling ourselves. The next step to repentance is to pray, to seek the face of God, to turn in our hearts and physically with our hands away from our wickedness. And then, and only then, the Lord hear from heaven and will forgive our sin and heal our land. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come before you. We worship you. Abba Father, we have need of your forgiveness. We have need, O oh God, to repent before your throne. Right now, Abba, we humble ourselves before you. We humble ourselves, O oh God, and we seek your face. Abba Father, have mercy on us. For your son's sake, the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, O God. Have mercy on us, Savior. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. We turn away from our idolatry. We turn away from our adultery. We turn away from everything which causes for us to sin every single sin knowingly or unknowingly we repent of them right now god by turning our hearts and minds against that thing to seek your face we prostrate before you in our hearts and minds and physically too acknowledging you as sovereign lord god in heaven for the sake of jesus christ have mercy on us O lord for the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, O God. Have mercy on us, O Father. We humble ourselves before you, and we seek you, O God. We turn away from our wickedness, Savior. Wickedness of anything, evil thing that is in our mind, anything we put above you, God. We turn away from our wickedness. Abba, Father, have mercy on us, O God. Have mercy on us, O Lord. We humble ourselves before you and we seek your face. We turn from our wicked ways. For the sake of Jesus Christ, hear from heaven, O God, and heal our land. These are all the mercies we ask of you, O God. Our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Every day we get up. We have to examine our ways, take every thought into captivity, and wait against the word of God to see if we are falling short of his glory. Then and there, when we recognize the ways in which we're going wrong, the things that we're doing that's not right, we need to point it out and bring it to the throne room of the Lord and Savior and say, God, have mercy on me. For the sake of Jesus Christ, humble your heart, humble your tongue, humble your mind before the true and living God. Reverence the spirit of the living God. Reverence the Holy Spirit. Reverence the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Prostrate and humble yourself before God. Acknowledge your faults. 
seek his face. Turn away from the wrong things, the, the things which are contrary to the spirit, the things which are contrary to the fruit of the spirit. Turn away from them, the things which align more to the works of the flesh. Turn away from those things, the things which the Lord calls sin, sin, the things which the Lord abhors. Turn away from them and seek God's face for mercy. Humble yourself and he will heal you. That is how we repent. I trust that this video has helped you guys. Until next time, I pray that you stay fired up for Jesus Christ. Amen.